Hi folks, today we're going to be looking at backgrounds. The environment you place your characters in is very important. Every story needs a setting, and the more thought you give to this, the more you can bring the story to life. When you create a panel, you have to consider the composition of the scene. It's the same principle a director will use when shooting a play, or a TV show, or a film. Your panel is like a TV screen. It's a rectangular window into another world. If it's an interior shot, you might see three walls of a room, but the fourth wall is like a one-way mirror. The viewer or reader can see in, but the characters cannot see out. Now you can create a basic flat background for each scene if you want to keep things simple, but you will find that your story will benefit more if you have an environment within which and with which your characters can interact. Draws the reader in by creating realistic points of reference. You can save a lot of time if you download free backgrounds from the internet. You can also download free SketchUp models for 3D interior shots. I'm going to assume that you want all your work to be original though, so let's look at the steps you have to take. For interior shots, SketchUp is very useful. For a basic room, you just need to create a floor and some walls. Draw a rectangle, use Pushball to make it 3D, use the offset tool to mark out the walls, draw lines at two corners to limit the outline to two or three sides, and then pull it up. Hey presto, instant room. We can add some textures, carpet, wallpaper. I'm going to keep this reference figure in so I can keep the proportions realistic. So to make a door, draw another rectangle about the right size and shape for this chap here. Big enough for him to walk through and wide enough so it's the right size. Offset again. Now extend the size of the inner rectangle down towards the floor. Erase the old bottom line. Erase all the lines that we don't want. Let's colour it white. And let's add a wooden texture to the door itself. Now pull out the white border and you have a nice 3D door frame. If you want to add more detail, you can create a skirting board with the offset tool in a similar way. I want the offset on the second wall to match the one on the first wall perfectly, so I will move the mouse pointer to this level of the first one I made. Now we need to block off these areas, and the rectangle tool is the best way to do this quickly. Now I'll sample the white colour from the door frame. With the paint bucket tool, use the keyboard shortcut. On a PC, hold down the Alt key and click. On a Mac, hold down Command and click. The bucket icon turns into an eyedropper and it samples the colour or texture that you're clicking on. Now click as normal where you want to drop the colour. For a window, Mark out the basic rectangle. Make sure it's about the right size and position on the wall in relation to your reference figure. 
now offset and then a second offset. We want this window to have panes, so we will divide the central rectangle in half using the rectangle tool. Click in the corner and move the mouse pointer along the line. When it reaches the midpoint, it will show you a small blue circle. Click here and now we'll do the same thing vertically. Offset each of these smaller rectangles. We want them to all be the same, so again we'll use the offset tool to find the right level on each one. And it works horizontally and vertically. Now erase the central lines and you have the central part of the window frame. Let's colour it white and pull it out into a 3D shape. Now I'll colour the actual window panes blue for now. I can come back later and add the actual image behind this image. Now for the outer part of the frame, paint it white again. Now I'll mark out a bottom section on this rectangle and pull it out again to make a window sill. Okay, now some furniture. Let's make a desk. Rectangle, add a wooden texture, pull it up into a solid block about level with a point halfway between this guy's knee and his waist. Now make a space with the offset tool, and again I'm going to make an extension down towards the floor. Now I push this inwards with the push pull tool and that makes the knee hole for the desk. Now for a chair it's the same basic principle. Draw a square near the desk, add some wooden texture, pull it up about level with the guy's knee. Now hold Alt, select the top surface and pull up again just a little bit. This creates the actual seat of the chair. Now I mark off a rectangular section at the back. This will be the back of the chair. Hold down Alt on the keyboard and now use the push pull tool, pull it up to its level with the guy's waist. Now for the legs of the chair, offset, extend the shape down to the floor, erase the unwanted lines. Now push this section until it reaches its limit. At this point it should vanish. If it doesn't, select the surface and press the delete key on your keyboard. Now do the same for the back and the front. Okay, that's nice, but it's a bit traditional. How about making something a bit more modern or science fiction? -y? 
I'm going to change the decor a little. I'm going to add some metallic textures to the wall and the floor. Now for the desk, I'm going to round off the corners using the arc tool. Pick one point, click, and then move it to the next point. When it goes pink, it's found the perfect curve. Click again, and it rounds it off. Let's give it a texture and pull it up. Offset for a knee hole and push it in. Now let's make the top a little bigger, offset again, but this time move it outwards. Colour the new surface, select both and pull them up. You can delete the line here to make it one surface, or you can keep it and use it to add detail. Now for a futuristic chair, we can start again with a block, but this time add some curves. Push these sections right to the edge and they disappear. Let's do one with armrests. Slight different approach. This time I'm going to make a thin section which is just one side of the chair.
Now I hold down the Alt key, pull a short way and click. This creates a new section. Now set the surface again, hold Alt and pull again. You want to make the second side about the same width as the first one. Now I want to delete the lines between the two armrests. Be careful to only delete the lines that you want. If you have holes, you can patch them up with rectangles. In SketchUp, this is called healing the surface. If you want to reposition an object, you can select it by drawing the selection area around it from left to right. Be careful to include only what you want, otherwise what you select will also become part of the selection. So if I want to select this chair, I have to change my perspective so I can draw the area around it without clipping the edge of the desk. So I'm going to change my view to an aerial view. As you can see, now I can select the chair without hitting the desk and the chair is highlighted in blue. Remember to always draw the selection area from left to right. This selects only the whole object. If you select it the other way, from right to left, it will select everything within the area even if it's not a whole object, like for example the floor, which you don't want. Now you can move the chair. You can also reposition it using the compass tool, and you can copy and paste it if you need more chairs. Now, if we have a problem where you want to select something but you can't get the selection area around it without getting other things in view, not a problem. Just select as much as you can, copy, now move the mouse pointer away from the model and paste. Now you've got what you wanted and you've also got little bits of other surfaces, but that's not a problem. Just get the eraser and erase them. Now select the whole object and you can move that back into the model and you can copy and paste that. Okay, now looking back at the window, we want to put an image in the window. You can import it in, but because we put dividers here, that's not really going to work. So what we're going to do, we're going to screen dump the image then we're going to put the background image behind the window. The way to do that is to take your original image, copy, paste that in layer. Then get your background image, whatever you want to be visible outside. Paste that in. Now put that as the middle layer. Go to the top layer and select the whatever the window pane is, whether it's been colored in blue. You can use the uh, color picker tool to select it and then edit clear. Now you've got the background image and you can move that around, reposition it, however you like.
If your model is quite complex and you're going to use it a lot, you may want to change different perspectives to get different shots for different scenes. So you probably want to add a third wall and maybe even a fourth. The only problem with adding a fourth wall is that the camera can't see through it. But there is a way around this. If you copy the whole thing, create a duplicate. In one of them, create your fourth wall, delete the wall opposite. Now you've got two models and you can move your perspective into whichever one you need depending on which angle you want to look at.